So we're here with Kitty Hawk. I'm gonna go through a little bit of warm up with her just so you can see where she's at and, and what I expect of her before we get into her daily work. So we start out at the walk, working walk, on a circle, somewhere between 15 and 20 meter circle. And I'm gonna go through our isolations first. So I'm gonna walk the hind end around the front. And my half halts are slowing down the front feet. And I want to try to keep consistent tempo as I do this. Good. And then I will switch to my outside aids and bring the front end around the hind end. Just looking for her to step laterally to the left, flex her jaw to the left and yield to my outside leg. Great. We'll come through here, let her get straight, change into right bend. So when I go through and change directions, I wanna feel like the whole spine of my horse changes from left bend to straight to right bend. So I'm really focused on being able to get those back muscles to take on the new bend. And I'm more thinking about changing that through my seat and legs than I am by pulling her into the new direction or doing too much with my reins. And I'll talk more about that as we go here, but let's do these isolations first on the right rein. So again, I'm gonna take hind end around the front. Keeping a good rhythm with her hind end there. I like that. And then front end around the hind. Pushing the outside of Kitty Hawk around the inside hind. As my mentor Frank would say, if you can't pull, you have to push. And Walk her forward, good. Good. Pick up a nice working jog here. So I'm thinking about how is she tracking? Okay, I want an even amount of bend throughout her spine, head to tail. And I wanna make sure that her inside hind is tracking up between her two front feet, which is first position. So once we've got that tracking where we want it, then I'm going to spiral in. Want the front and hind end to come in the same amount. I'm squeezing with my outside leg as I sit, stepping in my inside stirrup. Can spiral into maybe a 10 meter circle and then reverse that and gently start to spiral out. Inside leg is touching as I stand now, 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 and I'm stepping in my outside stirrup, trying to keep a uniform bend to the right. So there's a lot to manage here. Really wanna make sure that we don't get overbend in the neck. Really trying to get the joints of the hind leg to bend as we do this and keep a consistent tempo, flexion, and bend. Ah, just a little resistant to my outside leg there as I switch back to spiral in. Here we go, good. Good, and spiral out. Good, if she gets a little low, I might come here, say, come on, pick up your pole. That's good, good. And let's 
change reins. Try that the other way. So Kitty is a big, strong mare. She's got a nice neck, but her tendency is to get a little bit heavy in my hand, maybe lean down on the bit. So I've had to come up with some creative ways to get her to flex her jaw, but actually come up and lighten her forehand instead of lean down. So if I lift my hand, that's her signal to come up, follow that up and lighten the forehand. Okay, so let's try spiraling in now on the left rein. Get a little more from that right hind. Remember, we're working the right hind now. We want the right hind to step up between the two front feet onto our 10 meter circle and spiral out. Working the left hind. I want the left hind to step now between the two front feet. Trying for consistent tempo, consistent bend. Shoulder and hip should be the same distance from the center point of that circle. Very good. And again, back to spiral in. Spiral in, flex that jaw left. Good. And spiral out. So my spiral out is going to become my leg yield. My spiral in will become my half pass someday. Very good. Now we're gonna go right up along the fence and build on the in-hand work that we started with. So I can walk Kitty right here up along the fence. I'm gonna keep her haunches on the outside track and bring shoulders to the inside track. I'm trying to get her to track in first position or shoulder in. So as we come through this corner, I'm gonna half halt, slow the front end down, sweep out the corner with her haunches. Ah, try to keep that left flexion. Come on, she's leaning a little, that's okay. So I have to stay fluid with my aids. And I'm gonna come around here, just pick up the trot and then over there by letter C, I'll start again at the trot. So we're going trotting, first position. And now at the trot, we're gonna try to sweep out this corner. I'm trying to sit tall and just get a little bit of that little trot going. Okay, then on this part, I'll let her go out a little bigger. Let her lengthen the trot. Once I pass letter C, then I'm gonna to start to sit up, try to bring that balance up, up, up. Sweep out the corner. Ah, there's resistance there. Come on, you can, come on, good. So changing the balance within the gate, lengthening and shortening, that's a good challenge for one. Here we're lengthening. Now I'm gonna to start to sit up, try to get her steps to come up a little more instead of cover so much ground, sweep out the corner. That was better. Good, let's change reins. Change reins, change hands with my whip, and come around here. Try to shorten this trot now. Again, first position to the right, sweep out this corner. Good girl. And let's go lengthen, super.
as we come around to the fence. Again, I'm going to shorten. Good. Trying to keep that activity behind. Get that flexion in the jaw. Good. Good. Now, as I let her lengthen a little bit, we're going to add in these trap poles. Add them in. Good. So with, I love using ground poles for a lot of reasons. It's really good for their balance. So she's got to learn how to take some more elevated steps to go across here. And it's my job, good girl, to get that balance such that she's not leaning and rushing across. She's also not hanging back and slowing down as she crosses. If I get my balance, just right, she's going to come up and have a little more suspension as she goes across. I'll come through and change reins here. And I love using these ground poles on a fan because that gives me a little room for adjustability. If I need to take a longer step, I can spiral out a tiny bit. If I need to take a shorter step, I can spiral in. So I use these poles on an arc or fanned out like that most of the time, quite honestly. I'm riding a lot of different horses in the course of a day. So I can just basically leave my poles set and adjust in or out based on the stride of my horse. See if I can shorten this step now. Yes, good. Great. So that is some adjustability, some changes of balance within the trot that we've been working on with her.